Stephen Speak, a podcast about everything and nothing. Don't forget to subscribe. Hello, and welcome to Stephen Speak, episode number eight. Um, loving life today. Uh, Going to be talking about Lego. Uh, you knew it was coming. I post about Lego quite a lot, and you know that I love it. I'm sure you do by now. Uh, if you follow me on my personal Instagram as well, you'll see lots of sporadic Lego pictures as well as alien stuff and motorbikes and food normally as well, cakes and, and coffee and such things. But Lego plays a massive part in my social media and life. Um, currently stood in my cave, which looks like an absolute bomb's gone off. Because as normal, I've been trying to organise and tidy my Lego collection. Um, and where I stand in my room, I'm looking towards my my um, shelving that I assembled, which I talked about, I think, in the very first episode of Stephen Speak. Stephen Speak. Stephen Speak. Um, put my teeth in today. I feel like I've got like some pent-up energy or something today. It's a bit of, bit of a weird day. I've not achieved anything that I set out to do. I'm late doing my podcast today. Um, not that you would know that unless you're really, really avidly waiting for it to come out. So I'm a little bit behind, so um feeling a bit stressed and, and that today. Um my exam my anxiety of uh doing the things I wanted to do is 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 doing my head in today. So but yeah, I'm still looking at all these shelving, uh and it's full of Lego and it's glorious. Um and it's Lego's ninetieth ninetieth anniversary this year. Of the of the of the company Lego, that is. Um the 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 bricks that we, we all know and love today uh came around a little bit later. Um but I've got, I've got a little bit of history. I've got the Wikipedia page up because I want to get some of the facts right if, if in fact, Wikipedia is right. And from what I've read, it seems like the knowledge that I have seems correct on on Wikipedia. Uh, so well done, whoever's completed this and, and fact-checked it all. Uh, so, yeah, so the Lego, Lego Group was was uh, originally like a, a, a guy basically making toys. Um, and it was a it was a guy called Kurt Christian... Chris, Christiansen, um, and he was a carpenter, and so his company basically made wooden toys, and I think there's a really famous one, I think it's like a wooden duck, it was like one of the really famous toys that he created, um, and a few years after forming the company, he, he, he formed his business, he, he turned, he decided to call it Lego, which is, I think it's like Legos in, in Dutch or Danish, uh, Danish as it is. Uh, which means I think it means to play well or play good, um, and then a bit down the line, obviously when plastic became more of a viable product, they started making plastic toys, and then in 1949 they created a brick, uh, which they which they named the automatic binding brick, which is which is an hilarious name, um, very catchy. But that's that's what the that's what the name they went with. Um, there's probably nothing else like that on the market, really. There's probably wooden blocks, but you know, we all we've probably all seen them as kids when you uh, when you go to the doctor's surgery and stuff, and they're just like literally wooden blocks. Uh, so there's probably stuff like that around, but as far as I'm aware, uh, I don't think there was anything of this sort. Um, and these were quite popular, um, and they 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 place a patent pay a, a patent on that. Um, but I think it was the guy's son. Um, it kind of really took the took them to the next level, um, and he was the one that basically saw potential in the bricks, but not in the current form they were in. So it wasn't until like mid nineteen fifties that they started really working on like that as a system, really saying right, actually we need to focus on this. This could be a really good thing. And they've already, had, I think they've always had at the heart of uh, Lego, um, you know, their their kind of ethos is, is is it's like a system so it's like a it's, it's to play with but it's also to learn from and like get your brain going so they've always had that in there and then i think it was uh come to this it was 1958 when they when they placed the the pattern on the lego bricks that we like know today um and then duplo came out towards the end of the 60s as like a a younger younger range because obviously lego quite small and quite quite fiddly so you have younger kids don't have the dexterity for that, so they released the Duplo, which was like a like just a bigger form than it. And I love Duplo as well; it's so tactile. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of history of, of Lego, and they're, they're still going today. And it's everywhere, isn't it? Um, and it's now acceptable, really, for for an adult to you know, you're not seen as a complete weirdo if you say you you have Lego as an adult and you assemble it. And if you said, oh, "I've got Lego in the loft," and probably most people have that. 
But um, I think it is a little bit more accepting now to say, you know, I've got Lego. It's in the loft. Uh, but I play with some of it as well. Or I actually now collect it. Or, you know, just in general. Um, and when I got back into Lego, um, I can't remember what year it was, actually. They released a Back to the Future set, basically. And my friend Scott had bought it. And he was into Lego, same as me, when he was a kid. And... Um, I think it's just something you kind of get away from, like you 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 you, you see it as a toy, really. Uh, and even though I loved it to death, and I still kept all my original from from being a you know from when I was a kid, uh, which was in my loft, and I, I kind of like forgot about it. And even if I saw a Lego set, I think there was this stigma of like, oh, well, that's Ace, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy any because I'm an adult now. And weirdly enough, considering how many different hobbies and, and stuff I do, and how childlike I am in in a lot of sense, it's odd that I didn't just just follow my instinct and just go, you know what, it's fine to play with Lego. Like, you know, play with Action Men until I was 14, so who cares? <laughs> um, but yeah, but my mate Scott bought this uh, DeLorean Lego set that they had, um, which was like a, a fan-made uh, piece, which Lego actually then created. I can't remember what they called it now. It was something like, was it Lego Kudos or something like that? It was, but it's now called Lego Ideas. So they have a website the way if you want a Lego set to be created, you you basically create it, create it, submit the idea with the plans, uh, etc. Uh, and it's kind of like a crowdfunding thing. So people vote it, vote for it. Um, they upvote it, and if it gets to ten thousand likes, I think it is ten thousand votes. Lego then review the set um, for viability. So when when you actually vote on it, you you have to vote for you know, what price you think it would go for, who would it appeal to, and all things like that. Is it is it something that all age rangers would get get a kick out of? And obviously Back the Fu- Back to the Future is is a children's film, but it's from the eighties, so obviously there's a kinda of lot of nostalgia there. But it has playability still because it was a car and it looked cool. So that that actually got made and they still say they still do that now. It's called Lego Ideas now. Um But that seeing that I think and seeing Scott buy it uh, so I, I didn't know it was coming out, and and Scott had seen it on something, and and bought it, and uh, I was like, "That's bloody brilliant!" And it was about I can't remember the price. I think it was about forty pounds, thirty-five, forty pounds. So it's quite expensive. Uh, I think they they're paying for the license in there of the product um, of the of the film and stuff of the franchise. Um, but there was a little dark and a little uh, there was a little dark and a little Marty, uh, and a tiny little DeLorean and you can interchange the, the plates, the, the registration plates, and you could also make them. I think I'm pretty sure that one even you could make into the Back to the Future one, two and three car. So it was like three sets in one, really. Um, yeah, you could do that. I'm sure it came with train wheels, uh, for Back to the Future three. Um, I would say spoiler alert, but if you've not seen them by now, what are you doing with your life? Um, go and, go and watch the Back to the Future films is basically what I'm saying. Um, yeah, but that that got me back into Lego base. I bought it, made it. I, I was in Ireland at the time. We saw it in, in a shop in Ireland, and I bought it and I made it. And I, I just got so much joy out of it. Like it brought, it brought back all, like all my childhood memories of playing with Lego and assembling them, and following following the instructions. And it was obviously it was Back to the Future, and I love that film. And it was like nostalgia fest for me. And it was just it was honestly it was just brilliant. And damn you, Scott. Um, yeah, I'm in a bit of a wormhole now, <laughs> so it's kind of got out of hand. Well, not out of hand. I'm not. I'm, I don't like put myself into debt or anything. But I mean, if I was a millionaire, like I would have an absolute warehouse full of Lego. I would. I would buy buy a set, and I would. I would buy two of every set. Basically, I would keep one in a warehouse under lock and key, vaulted, unopened, pristine, and the other one I would. I would. I would display and, and get out and and make and and other bits. I would keep for spares and. I would have a massive room just organised to the hilt with Lego. And I would have all my favourite ones on display in another massive room, like a museum. Um, you know, one day, one day. I'm not far off in this room for display-wise, though. I do have a lot of sets. So um, currently right in front of me, some of my favourite things that I have on display. Um, I've got also got non-Lego things displayed here as well. I have, like, the uh, Neutrino one from Ghostbusters. And I have... Um, like 
a couple of the set things I've tribble from from Star Wars. Uh, God, wash my mouth out. Star Trek. I have a tribble from Star Trek. Uh, the reason I said Star Wars because literally I've got loads of Star Wars Lego right in front of me. Um, so yeah, I've got like a General Grievous and a Darth Vader and a Jango Fett and and a um, an X Wing. And I used to have a Tie Fighter, but I broke that up recently because. It was um, a new order one. I didn't really like it too much. It's a good mo- little model, but I wanted to make space for some other stuff. I've got Flintstones. I've got a pirate ship. I've got the heli carrier from Marvel. I've got a few vehicles. So I've got like uh, the Volkswagen Beetle, the Volkswagen uh, camper van. I've obviously got my Back to the Future car. I've got some Playmobil as well, which is Back to the Future, seeing the theme. I've got a brilliant remote control RC Technic car, which is so fun to play with. I've got a Wally. I've got Jurassic Park stuff. The big, you know, the big gates. And I'm also going to purchase the the new set hopefully soon. Um, once I get paid, I'm at the Friends Cafe, and I'm going to hopefully, if it's still in stock, again it's a rare one now. But I'm going to purchase the the other Friends set of the apartments. But the Big Bang Theory. I've got Harley Davidson. I've got the Saturn V rocket. And they're all on display, so there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. Oh, I've got the, the Guggenheim Museum as well, and I've got a few other little little uh, Lego trinkets around. And I've also, one of the one of the best ones that I've got is is something that Sarah bought me, because I love minifigures, and we'll get onto that, but I have, um, she bought me one of the first Lego characters from like the 70s, so they're not actually the traditional Lego figures that we know today. Uh, they were like articulated little doll ones, still made of plastic and like angular, but they were they're a completely different scale, and... They were more like the original figures that came... Oh, God, what's that set they did? Oh, my brain's going to have an explosion. I might have to Google it, so apologies if you hear my mechanical keyboard. Um, oh. I, I, I had it as a kid. We used to play with it as a kid, and it was like a... It was Lego set, but it, I had a little, it had a little crow, and there was a there was another bird as well, and they had a motorbike and stuff, and it was kind of like a younger playset. Um, but I just can't think at all what it was. Uh, what it was called? Hang on, I'm getting there. This is really unprofessional. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it had a weird name actually, and I'm just getting it up now. So you got town. Well, they just they've just done so they've just done so much. Um I always loved the castle stuff and I never never got any of the medieval stuff when I was a kid. I used to love all the medieval stuff and the pirate ships and stuff. Hence the reason I've got a pirate ship because they they re-release some of the pirate ones as a special uh, um, creator thing. So you can actually make three different models out of the pirate ship, but the pirate ship's the best. Apart from there is there is a, like a Skull Island one as well. So I mean if I had enough money I would have bought both actually. I'd have bought two sets and had one as the Skull Island one as the ship, but I'm not made of money because it's so you know it's an expensive hobby. Let's face it. Um, Fabuland, there you go, Fabuland. Is that what it was called? Yeah, Fabuland. Yeah. So that ran from like late late seventies to like the eighties, and it was a, it was a bit of a strange one. Uh, but we had a little bit of that that I think was my brother's actually. Um, and so, some of the characters in that were like there was houses, but they were they were like larger pieces and larger sets, and we had a. It was a mouse and a crow, I think it was, uh, or a bear, or a bear and a crow. But there was a motorbike and a little car and stuff like that. And um, that's the only thing we had of that. In fact, it might have been a raccoon actually. Looking at these pictures, uh, Ricky Raccoon and his scooter. So <laughs> I think that's what we had. Um, and then we had Charlie Crow and his carryall car. There you go. Um... <laughs> So they're the two, they're the two Fabu Land ones we had, and I've still got them as well. Plus, we had a load of Duplo, which I think was my brother's as well. I can't, I don't actually know about that. I think it might have been mine. I, I, I don't even know. That. I've still got that in my collection anyway. Um, but anyway, yeah. So they've done, they've done many themes over the years, and I, I, I would collect it all. I would, I would literally, if I had the money, I would, I would, I would just, I would just collect a lot. Um, but yeah, these. These minifigures that Sarah got me aren't the original ones, and, and the Fabulands are very much like them, with articulated, moulded heads and stuff, and then they kind of moved away from them. Um, and Lego Technic had their own own range of, of person as well, uh, that you could sit in the cars, um, but they seem to die a death as well, for some reason. I don't I don't know why, because the Lego Technic ones are actually pretty cool, because they were like, they're more like um, 
more like a little action figure, really. It was still made of Lego, and you, I think you, they had, like, holes in their arms and legs where you could actually, I think, attach Lego to it. I only ever had one of them, and I lost it, I think. Or was it... It might have been my brother's, and he... he oh, my mum gave it away or something. My mum, unfortunately, used to like giving things away. Um, <laughs> you know, reuse and pass it on to the next generation, etc. But, you know, it was annoying when it was your own stuff and you didn't know about it. You come home from school and it was gone. <laughs> Um, sorry, I'm drinking Coke again, so, you know, uh, deal with it. Um, yeah, so, from from going from pretty much, a, like, a lost kind of thing, I've always kept my Lego, because I always said, like, I wanted to keep it. Is it something that I loved so much as a kid, I didn't want to ever get rid of it. So, going from that, and I've probably got, like, more Lego than I've ever had as, well, I know I've got more Lego than I ever had as a child. Um, it wasn't something that, um... I went into thinking I'm going to start collecting this again. It was like, I'll buy that one piece. Got a bit of joy over it. I can't remember what I bought after that. I think it was like blind bag minifigures because they, they started doing like mini bit mini series figures. And I think that because I was out of the loop with the whole Lego thing, um, I started just Googling. I thought, oh my God, they do like little m- like minifigures in bags. You don't know what's in them, but you can stand in the shop and like feel up the bag and, and guess which ones they are. And I'm pretty good at doing that now. Um yeah, so that that was it. It just spiraled, really. Um, but my my room, I've got, as I've said in the first episode, I've got, like, built-in kitchen cabinets and stuff. And out of the four big cupboards, like, two of them are completely filled with Lego. There's Lego underneath it. And I've just purchased... Um, I think I shared it on Instagram, but I will share some pictures to go along with this episode. Uh, like, a big set of drawers, like, the really useful storage company... Uh, you can actually design your own drawers and stuff on that now. So I designed, like, a set of drawers. So I've got, like, three big, big fat drawers and, like, I think it's, like, six or seven small drawers on top, like, A4 size. Um, and it's pretty much completely full of Lego. Well, it is it not, not it is completely full of Lego. Plus, I have some, you know, like, the assortment, like, the toolboxes, like, the assorting ones, like, the sorting boxes for, like, nails and screws and bolts and stuff. I've probably got about... Six normal size ones of them full of Lego. And then I have these two massive ones, and they're full of Lego. And then I've got a big massive bag just full of Lego wheels, like Lego tyres off, off cars. I You don't know how many wheels I've got. It's absolutely insane. And then I've got a bag of Lego, because I, I accumulate unwanted Lego. When I see someone on Facebook, I'll be like, someone's selling a bag of Lego for a tenner, and I'll go and grab it. And my neighbour actually gave me a massive bag of Lego... Um, from his kids, and some of it was fake, and I'm quite a purist, like, I don't have fake Lego, so if it's fake, it, you know, it gets given away to the charity shop, or if it's damaged, it goes in the bin, uh, in the recycle bin, though, because it is recyclable, um, yeah, and I've still got that to sort out, so, um, it's, it's like an ever surmounting tax to me, but it's, it's just, it's just trying to figure out how to sort it, it's obviously limited in space, I'm not, I haven't got a massive house, um, and I don't really, even though I love Lego, I don't really want it to take over my space completely. So the, I'm trying to figure out still in my own head the best way to organize it all. Um, and at the moment, what I'm doing is separating it into color and uh, really generic type of brick. So is it a flat plate brick, as in a plate, so no, it doesn't go up more than one stud? Um or is it a brick, which means it goes up more than one stud? So that's how I'm doing it at the moment. And if anything doesn't fall into them two categories, i.e. like uh, minifigure accessories and Lego Technic stuff, that's being separated out. And the, all the minifigure accessories and stuff are going to be sorted separately. And all the Lego Technic and like all the stuff that makes the figures like from the... Um... Oh my god, my brain's not functioning at all today. Um... They did a series where... It, they were like these mechy mech kind of looking things, and they produced like lots of individual, um, lots of individual like monsters and things like that. And Star Wars do do arrange them as well. So they've they've released like the Boba Fett and Darth Vader and and General Grievous as these sets. So it's going to annoy me about that. So I'm going to Google that as well. So um, I can't. Th- it's really going to annoy me why my brain's not functioning. Do you ever get that where you just you, you know something about a subject, but your brain just will not let you, um, you know, just will not let you focus on it. I hardly talk right now. 
Uh, Bionicle is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, it was Bionicle. So they, if you Google that, they were like um, very specific f- like um, pieces for them. And I got some stuff off a guy from work as well. And there was, there was so many sets in it. And it was like a big, massive pile. And it's taken me probably 18 months, two years to sort through that. Like doing bit at a time, bit at a time, bit at a time. And then I got this stuff from the neighbor. And then that's taken me probably a year to get through. Um, but it's quite it's quite cathartic actually. It's quite relaxing actually going through it all because it's just a, it's just a it's quite a mindful task really. Um, and I do get quite a lot out of out of Lego. It's it, it's it's one of the things where it it exercises the brain because you've got to follow step by step instructions. But sometimes you don't know where they're going with it. Like some of the builds, especially nowadays, they're getting quite intricate and they're getting quite they're not they're not making things in the normal way that you would think they would they would they would they would construct something. Like back in the back in the day when I was a kid, like it was literally brick on brick on brick. Oh that's that's pretty. Um and you could see the the process of it, but <clears throat> excuse me. The way they do things now is they'll they'll build a part and then you're like, How is it gonna get to look like that? That's bizarre. And then it'll say, flip it over and just put this here and put this here, flip it back, and you're like, oh, that's super clever. It is literally like engineering nowadays. And it really pleased me. Little things like that really please me. And I t- what really pleased me as well, how how the bricks go together. It's just so accurate. Like the the they they, they go together and they click. And 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 there's that um really like firm connection, but it's not too firm that you can't get it back off again. Obviously, the, the, there are exceptions to that rule. Is when you put like a like a two b one plate onto another plate, and you're like, "Well, I need I need the finger strength of a god," uh, which luckily I do. I have developed. I've been playing with Lego for the last what uh, I would say like eight or nine years again. Like, and and my finger strength is immense now. <laughs> I can literally separate plates. Uh, it's my one talent in life. I can separate Lego uh, with with no with no, with no trouble at all. Um, uh, but they did they did release like a Lego separator as well, so you can actually separate Lego easy. But it just it just um, the the whole the whole engineering side of it as well, and, and Lego like are pushing boundaries with it now. They're using it in play and education, and 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 they they years ago they brought out like a whole science division part, and you could like make robots and program it and code it, and ugh, immense. I've I've never really had any of that. It doesn't really interest me that. Uh, the Lego Technic side does a little bit, but I, I I like the stuff that imitates life. Whereas Lego Technic is is like we'll make it we'll make something, but it's the bricks look different and it's a bit see through. And even though like you can sometimes get a bigger model for a cheaper price, it 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 doesn't appeal to me as much um, as the um, I don't like the Lego City stuff where you can buy a bus with people getting on and off and like an old granny with a shopping and stuff. For me, that just really appeals to me. Um, and that's the sort of stuff I liked when I was a kid. My very first one, um, my very first Lego that was actually mine, I'm, as I say, I remember playing with like the Fabuland and, and, the, and the Duplo. But I remember the first one that I just remember getting, receiving as a gift was a um, police like response van. And it had lights and sound. And um, when I rediscovered my love for Lego, I went into my loft and and... and I'd forgotten what I had really, to be honest. I remember I had like a port and had this police van and I had a, a petrol station and, and, a, and a space shuttle, but I'd forgotten quite a lot of the stuff that I had. I went up into the loft and I've got this police van out and when I there was a battery in the battery compartment and I, I actually turned it on and it worked and then the battery it 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 it, it, it would life expired in like 1994 or something, but it was still working. So kudos to the uh, to the battery company there. Um, but that's just what I love about Lego, you know. Like that thing is, well, now it's it's like twenty. How old would it be? I don't even want to think about it. Actually, thirty. Yeah, about probably about thirty years old, and like it's it's like new. Like it it's still got all the playability it had when it was when it was fresh out of the box. It works still. Like there's lights and sound, and it still works. And um, it's just a cracking little set. Um, but what really interests me when I got all my old Lego out was the minifigures of how they've developed over time. Because it used to be like the mini, the traditional minifigure, they, they all pretty much had the same face, uh, a yellow, a yellow mold with like this little smiley face on. And then you then put a hat or a wig or something on their head 
and their, even their clothing was was really minimal kind of printing nothing too complex like if they were like a like a dock worker they had generic overalls which is the same as the litter picker and the same as like i don't know like a track like a like a like a farmer um and then the same with the uniforms of like like the police and stuff they were like just like very very basic like black maybe a couple of buttons and a badge painted on um whereas nowadays like like they that's so intricate and they have arm printing and leg printing and and different hairstyles and double face prints and and different colored faces and it's just amazing they have baby baby minifigures um yeah it's it's crazy and uh i i actually love the minifigures for me that buying the sets the minifigures are the big part for me i love a set that's like intricate i, I recently had a harry potter set actually um and I got it cheap on Facebook. It should have been like 25 quid and someone will sell it on Facebook brand new for a 10. I was like, I'm having it. Uh, so one of the 25th anniversary ones and it comes with a golden Harry Potter. So that's like a limited thing. And it comes with three minifigs. It comes with Harry, uh, Hermione and Ron Weasley. But it's the uh, the poly, what's it called? The poly something potion where they change. They can make themselves change into someone else. As long as they've got someone else's hair, they can change that person. And it's when Hermione accidentally, accidentally turns herself into a cat. Uh, so it has Hermione's face. You can actually use it as Hermione. Or you can put, like, the cat... Instead of using her hair, you can put this cat face over the top of the over the top of the minifigure head. And she, and it turns into, like, a cat. And it's an interesting little build as well. It's, like, in the toilet. And it's the toilet door and the little toilet. And the, the secret entrance through the, through the uh, sink and, and faucet area. And, yeah, it comes with little potion bottles. And it's just, it's just a lovely little set. And it's a little tiny, tiny room with four four corners and it's built up and yeah it's just ace and it's reminiscent of a set that i had as a kid because I've, I've not seen this part used in in many sets and it's a little set I had, I had a fire station when i was a kid and it had these um like bricks and they had a groove cut in the side and the groove was for like a shutter on on the doors of the fire station um and this this set uses one of them and i've never seen like them used in another set that i i have I have owned, have owned at least anyway, um, but yeah, it's uh, and it's just stuff like that. Them little sets, like, and they can bring they how they put things together and the, and the joy you get out of it, like it's it's ace and, and like I'll probably break that little set down and and keep the pieces obviously, but the minifigures will go on display. But minifigures for me are the other other are, are, are the key component, and um, I'll try and put some pictures up on the social media of some of my Lego and and that. But I mean. It's just such a great learning tool. I think it helped me with spatial awareness, like following instructions, being patient, searching for the stuff. Because obviously, you again, again, when, like Lego sets now, if there's a lot of pieces, the, the bags are numbered and it'll tell you to open this bag. Whereas back in the day, even if you got a large Lego set, it was all in different bags, but you didn't know where each piece was. Whereas now, you, you goes open set, open bag one, and you know all the pieces are in, are in that bag. Uh, whereas, yeah, you know, you could open five bags and you'd have a pile of Lego and you were trying to find a piece. So they've, they've made it easier in that sense, but you still don't lose out on that joy of trying to find the pieces. Some people uh, know all the, all the pieces, which basically means that they separate them all out and arrange them into little groups. Um, so when they're going through, they can find out what they want. But I, I never really do that. Um, I, I Part of the joy for me is trying to find the piece as fast as you can, ready for the next thing. And I always remember my dad, doing with it or my mum trying to help me which i didn't need any help i hated them when they're trying to help me but um they used to give up pretty quickly because they'd be like oh so we need a 2b1 red and i'd be like yep got it and they'd be like so we need and i'd got it and i was always like three steps ahead of them and uh just because i think you you kind of get dialed into that sometimes you like you, your brain gets dialed into like seeing the pieces um but yeah i i think that really helped my development if i'm honest i think it really um, it's something that I took to, and and I think I've got really good spatial awareness and stuff like that. I think that's partly down to Lego, like seeing how things fit together and and working it out. And um, yeah, I'm not really one for building my own stuff though. Weirdly enough, like I w I will I will, but I'm not one for for doing that exclusively. Like some people get a really big kick of you know getting a Lego set, breaking it down, keeping the spare bricks, and then creating their own things. And I think maybe once I get it all sorted and it's all organised, maybe I will do that. But for now, I'm quite happy with collecting and, and, and getting pleasure out of the builds that someone else has created for me to, to get pleasure out of building. Um, 
It was something actually something I created years and years ago. And I think my mum was a little bit worried at the time. My, my mum and dad got divorced and we'd, we'd gone to Ireland. And I was like, what, 20, I think. Um, but we went to Ireland and we, we used to always go into my granddad's caravan. So we went down and we stayed, we stayed in me in my granddad's caravan. Um, and my auntie had, had bought a load of Lego uh, for my cousin. He was, he was a lot younger than me. I think he was about 10 at the time. Um, and she just bought it off a car boot sale. And I was like, oh my God, Lego. And um, this was like, this was before I even got back into it. And this didn't even spark that getting back into it for some reason. I think it was because I was starting a new job and buying a house. So it was like a fleeting pleasure. And then I forgot about it. But I made, I made out of this Lego, like this big, I didn't know what to build. And I was just picking stuff. And I made this car and I made something else. I made a plane, as you do, you know, the basics, you know. And then I think we wanted to go to McDonald's. Um, but there wasn't one anywhere near, uh, and we end up settling for fish and chips or something in the, in the, in the local little local village. Um, but when we got back, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to build a McDonald's. So I thought, I think I've got enough red bricks here and, and all this. So I actually built a McDonald's drive through and it had the, the golden arches built into the wall, and it had the little thing where the people order, and it had the arrows on the floor to say, drive around the corner. And I've got pictures of it, but I don't know where they are, because it's like the, my phone at the time would have been rubbish. So God knows where they are. But I, I had the people ordering the food. I had, I had even detailed bins and seating areas inside. And to be fair, I was actually quite impressed with it. And my, my mum was concerned. I think she was like, I think she thought I was regressing back to a child because of the divorce but it wasn't anything to do with that it was literally like i was just getting pleasure out of it but it's strange at the time that that didn't really rekindle my love affair with lego it was it was when i was thinking i was settled in my house and i had the capacity maybe for it and and obviously seeing back to the future and then actually sitting and, and follow maybe it was because i was following instructions and i'm very rule-based and i like to follow instructions uh the majority of the time um but yeah, um, but minifigures are my joy, and I haven't counted them for a while, but my last count on my phone, I have, I had, I think I had 504, but I know for a fact that that's like years ago, and just looking in front of me now, I think there's like 80 on display with the sets I've got in front of me, and then I was counting some other random ones, and, and my estimate is probably well over 700 now, uh, and my plan is to get them, I've got a space on my wall, and I've got loads of Lego plates, and my plan is to literally get them all onto the wall um, and display them. I'd like to, like, catalogue them, to be honest. So this minifigure was from this set, released in this year, and, and properly catalogue them. But that, that's going to be so much work. But it'll be worth it when I do it, like, but it'll be a lot of work. And, and I'd like to literally put a little plate underneath each one, you know, with a bit of writing on each one, like a little bit of label on it saying this is what this minifigure is. It's, they say this is Harry Potter from set such and such, so, so the Harry Potter one I've got here is Lego set, where is it, 76386, six, I think it says, I haven't got my glasses on, <laughs> getting old, um, but yeah, and that's that's my idea, so Harry Potter from this set, released on this year, or even just the set number, because then you can Google that, because they're always online, um, but yeah, I just, I just love Lego, it brings me so much happiness, and uh, it does get just it does get a bit frustrating though when I haven't got it all sorted yet. Like I would like to just click my fingers and have it all just where it should be, all organised, so I can just basically focus on other things. <laughs> but you know, it's it, it never gets me down that much. It never never really it never becomes a, a drag uh, to the point that I, I I would like just you know just give up on it. It's a it's a labour of love, as they say. Um. I, I would, I, you know, I would, I would say to any adult, you know, if you if you've never had some Lego, you know, get in there and have a have a have a play. Um, I had an interview. Um, when would it have been? About eighteen months ago, about a year ago, and I used I used Lego in my interview to get a point across. Um, because that's just displaying my personality, and I the thing I wanted to perfect. Pervé is was was the uh, I thought I can use Lego for this. I, I, why why won't I? Like I shouldn't hide what I am. Why, why shouldn't I? I, I can't, I'm not going to hide who I am. So I did, and uh, yeah, I just you know that's just that's just um, the versatility of Lego. Use <laughs> use it in an interview. Probably probably not. I didn't get the job, so probably not. Um, but you know it's. Um, it's just such a great. It's just a, such a great toy, and it's beyond a toy for me. It's it's 
it's educational and it and it's cathartic. It's so if you've got any toy, you've got kids, or you know, just buy a set. Have a look on the Lego website. There's probably something that you'll find interesting. They do like architecture sets and all this sort of stuff. And and I'm not getting any money for for promoting Lego like this. I'm just it's just a passion of mine. I absolutely love it. Um, I mean, I'd love if they would give me some Lego on the side to talk about Lego. That'd be ace. But no, it's not. So just just have a look. You know, there's probably some Lego for you. They're doing architecture sets. So like the Guggenheim Museum that I've got displayed is like a miniature version of the Guggenheim Museum, and they've they've done like skylines and different buildings. They've done like the Statue of Liberty, um, and they do they do like um, flowers and stuff now. Like you can buy flowers. I've got a little bonsai plant that Sarah bought me, uh, and it's literally it makes a little flat plant pot and a bonsai, and it looks ace. Like it looks bloody brilliant. Um, yeah. It's the little things in life, isn't it? Well, I think I've talked about Lego long enough, really. Um, yeah, just, you know, don't judge people as well. You know, don't judge people. If someone likes Lego, don't look at them weird. You know, everyone has uh, vices. You know, some people really like football. Some people really like playing golf. Um, cricket. I couldn't, I, I, I can't see anything more boring than watching cricket. I like playing it, but I couldn't think of any more, anything more boring than Especially like paying a lot of money to go and watch it, like I can't, I can't comprehend that. But some people wouldn't be able to comprehend me spending two hundred eighty nine pound on a on a on a or two hundred fifty nine pound on a Lego Ghostbusters firehouse made of Lego, like little plastic bricks. But I did, and I love it, and it's on display. It's one of the ones I didn't mention, and it's freaking awesome. Um, yeah. Um, oh, there is actually, thinking of it, I don't like fake Lego, but there is only, um, oh, just knocked the mic again, sorry. <laughs> there is only one that I, that one uh, fake bit of Lego that I actually own, and it's it's justifiable for me because they will never create this in real Lego, uh, and it's um, a little miniature uh, Ripley and um, Kane and two little aliens, one from Alien, one from Aliens. Um, that I bought off eBay, and it's really terrible quality Lego, uh, and it's fake, obviously. Uh, but they're the only ones I'll justify ever having in my house because they'll never make Aliens official sets. And if they do, I shall uh, cast away these these fakey ones and 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 purchase the the proper ones. But I feel like that will never happen because Lego have quite a strict thing on what they will franchise, and they don't like weapons. Weirdly enough, even though some of the minifigures have weapons. That's a conversation for a different day. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you very much for listening. I've gone on a little longer than I meant to, but you know, when you're talking about something you really like uh, and you're passionate about it, I think um, it's hard to hard to reel yourself in. And it's hard for me to do that anyway because I'll just ramble on about crap. Um, thank you very much for listening. And please spread the word. If you do like what you're listening to when I'm rambling on, then thank you. If you don't, then I apologize, <laughs> but you chose to listen. Um, but no, give me suggestions. You know, if you've got anything you would like to hear my comments on or, you know, or hear me chat about or if you think, well, I've seen him post about that or I've seen this, wonder what, you know, wonder what I would think about that. Like, just just drop me a line. Uh, I've had some really nice feedback, um, so I do appreciate that. Um, but I don't mind some constructive criticism at the same time. Um, I'm new to this. I'm still loving it. Um, and I'd like my audience to grow. Um, just... Because, really, just because it would be just nice to touch more people, really. Um, I'm doing this for my own joy, but I'm doing it for other people's joy. If I can spread smiles, then happy days. And, uh, you know, that, that's what I'm aiming for at the end of the day. So thanks very much for listening. And I will speak to you all very, very soon. Cheers. You've been listening to Stephen Speak Podcast. I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. 